Hey everyone, welcome back to the Whoopi Studio. Today I'm here to talk about Cobra Kai Season 6, Episode 1. It is called Peacetime in the Valley. At long last, Cobra Kai is back. It has been roughly 22 months. The last season came out in September of 2022. So it has been a long wait. Um, it's coming out in part. So Part 1 is currently out. So go watch it if you want to. I've already watched the whole thing, but I'm now going back and re-watching it um with my parents so we just watched episode one so um here i am to do a review on it but part two comes out on november 15th so it is a bit of a wait um and then part three is sometime in 2025 probably earlier on in the year is my guess um but yeah we have five episodes to enjoy and just some some brief thoughts overall is that i like the first five episodes i did think there was a lot of filler uh, especially episode two was pretty mediocre to me of an episode, but um, episodes three, four, and five were all pretty solid, I thought. Um, episodes one and two were probably the weakest, but I would say episode one still had good moments in it. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into episode one. So we start off with like this montage of everyone, you know, everyone's happy, there's peace. Um, you know, we have Tori and Robbie together. We have Sam and Miguel together. Daniel and Amanda are happy. We have Johnny and Carmen preparing for their baby. Miguel and Robbie are like stepbrothers, kind of. Um, and then we kind of quickly jump into the the conflicts. We have Eagle Fang is completely burned down. And this really throws Johnny for a loop because, you know, his dojo that he built is destroyed. And he's kind of tired of playing second fiddle to Daniel and Chosen at Miyagi-Do. Um, he wants to take a more active role obviously he doesn't feel like he feels like daniel and chosen are dominating him and he's kind of questioning is it worth it to stay in miyagi do if i'm not gonna have like a say so and like the, the big things um so that, that i mean i feel like this was like an obvious conflict that like we have seen before and one thing the daniel and johnny arguing is very old in these episodes that was like probably like the one thing i did not like it just I don't understand why they have to resort to them arguing all the time. It's just very frustrating. It's very drawn out at this point. So that that was a disappointment. Um, this episode, it wasn't as bad, though, as the subsequent episodes. But I did think that Ch Johnny and Chosen arguing was very funny. And last season, I love their dynamic. And what we got of it this season was great, too. Um and I was kind of hoping for a big fight between them, but I was fine with what we got more like a playful fight. But I did like um, so Hawk and Dimitri unveiled the Miyagi Fang logo, but Daniel and Chosen do not like the logo. Um, and this pretty much just leads to Johnny and Chosen going to fight it out and winner gets the name or pretty much gets to pick the name. So whether it's Eagle Fang or whether it's Miyagi Do um the winner will get to pick the name so that's kind of like weighing on this entire episode like who's gonna win what's the name gonna be i mean i think we all figured it wasn't gonna be eagle fang miyagi fang i'm not really a big fan of it just sounds weird same with eagle doe i really do think miyagi doe was the only logical choice um and i do think it took a lot of guts and a lot of growth and maturity for johnny to finally come to the decision to um train under miyagi do like no miyagi fang they do have a little eagle on their um logo design but it did take a lot for him to come to that decision which really just shows how much he's grown as a person but one thing about johnny in this episode that was interesting was we had it was clear he still has trauma from crease um you know he gets a message and he thinks it's Crease telling him to meet him in Coyote Creek. And that's exactly what I thought was happening. And we were going to get like a fight or something. Um, and then we have him walking through Coyote Creek with an axe. And we keep hearing Crease's dialogue in the background. But then we find out it's just Stingray training a bunch of kids in the forest. And that was pretty funny. You know, Stingray is, is a fan favorite of mine. So, and, and, and my dad too. So, it's always nice whenever he shows up on screen. And the actor is great. He's won so many awards. Um, it's nice to see him in Cobra Kai as well. Kind of, I, I don't really know if this is where his career kind of jump started, but I do know that he is a fan favorite among the fandom for the most part. So, but Stingray wants Johnny to take back Cobra Kai his way. 
and he thinks he'll be better off. And I mean, this is what I've been saying all along is that I want Johnny to take back Cobra Kai, but I do think things are kind of fresh right now. And I think the Cobra Kai name is tainted at the moment. So I don't think it makes any sense for Johnny to reopen it. I think it makes sense for Johnny to train with Daniel and chosen and partner with them. But I do think this is kind of foreshadowing for maybe like the end of the show or maybe in part three, we have Johnny kind of deciding to take back Cobra Kai his way. Um, it's going to be interesting because we have all these conflicts through these episodes about with Johnny and Daniel. Like, are they going to, I'm assuming they're going to make up, but are we going to get to see them in the same dojo at the end of it? Or are we going to have them kind of like making amends amicably, but deciding not to train together after the tournament? It's going to be interesting because um, I just, I don't see how this could work out long term. And it, it clear through these episodes, it's not working out long term between Johnny and Daniel. So that conflict is going to be interesting throughout these episodes and throughout the rest of the season for sure. Um, but we have Chosen, who's very upset over Kumiko not answering his phone call and he feels rejected. And, and this, this is interesting. I do feel for Chosen. Um, but kind of going into this season, I am wondering what is his purpose going to be? You know, we have Johnny as like the more aggressive sensei we have Daniel as like the balanced sensei what is chosen going to be because I love chosen last season but I wonder like what is his purpose in this season of the show um I mean I do think he's going to play a big role with Daniel and the Miyagi secrets because chosen has a connection to Miyagi do I think he's going to probably be involved in that more than Johnny um maybe he'll know some stuff about Miyagi I don't know um, but I do think chosen and I, we do see him kind of in and out of these episodes and not in all the episodes kind of, I'm going back to Okinawa. So I do think he's going to show up later in a, in a role, um, with hopefully reunited with Kumiko. Um, I do think that storyline is not over and I do think we will see chosen happy with Kumiko by the end of the season. So yeah. Um, I did like when Johnny and chosen started fighting for fun. Um, I did really like that and how the three of them, including Daniel, just started fighting on the sparring deck. That that, that was a nice moment um, between the three senseis. And I want more of that, you know, less just tension, more just like play fighting. It's what I really like about this show for sure. I mean, I do like the fighting, but I like it when it's like fresh fights and like fresh tensions instead of like the, the, the same old Johnny and Daniel tension. But this episode, I didn't mind it so much because I like the Johnny and Chosen tension more than the Johnny and Daniel tension. So, um, but that's kind of all for this specific storyline. So let's go ahead and just jump over to the kids. So we have Sam and Tori. They're kind of friends in a way, but not really. They're they're more like friends that just like don't speak to each other. They're they're more like allies. Like. They don't hate each other anymore, but they don't want to talk to each other because of everything that's happened. So Miguel and Robbie kind of want to make them friends. You know how Miguel and Robbie were able to work their stuff out through that fight. They think Sam and Tori can work their stuff out. So they all go on this double date to golf and stuff. Um, I feel like this is kind of like a fan fiction um, moment, like seeing them on a double date because it was so awkward. I mean, pretty realistic. Like, Sam and Tori were just so out of it. They did not want to be there. We had Miguel and Robbie trying so hard to make things less awkward, but everything only ended up being more awkward. And then Robbie sees Kenny at the place and is trying to get him to join their dojo, but Kenny is very still closed off. He's, you know, very upset because he put his trust in Silver and all he got back was just, ch like, cheating and just discovering that he was a bad guy. And that must be really hard on Kenny. But I liked we got Sean back. Um, that that was a nice surprise, I think. I didn't I don't think we knew Sean was coming back. So um I like seeing him and Kenny's interactions. We 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 see that Sean thinks that Robbie abandoned Kenny, which is kind of accurate, but we can't say Robbie didn't try, and we can't say that Kenny was totally in the right either, because he wasn't. Um, but we have Sean's just very like protective of Kenny. And at first we kind of think Sean's just still a bad guy from Juvie. But it's kind of clear after the fight that Sean really does care about Kenny. 
Um, but we do have this fight in the batting cages between starts out with Robbie and Sean and then Miguel gets involved and we have Sam and Tori holding Kenny back. Um, this fight was just okay to me. I thought it was kind of like sloppy edited, like there was too much going on. I thought like Sam and Tori trying to hold Kenny back was kind of odd too. Like, I don't think it, we, we know how strong Kenny is. I don't think it would have taken him that much to get past them or anything like that. I thought that was kind of like weird. Um, the Miguel and Robbie versus Sean was just, I don't know. I just think there was too much going on. And this was like one of those cases where I felt like the editing and was just kind of sloppy and rushed. That was just me though. Um, but I did like the scene after with Kenny and Sean where Kenny tells him like what I learned from silver wasn't stupid, you know, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. And Sean says like, that's the dumbest thing he's ever heard. And I kind of like how Sean has become like became the voice of reason. And I think it would have been a mistake to make him a bad guy. Like he was in season three when he was with Robbie and Juvie. I think it was a great choice to make him like a better person and looking out for Kenny and kind of like pushing him to go to Miyagi Do with Robbie. I love that. Um, and I love that scene overall just between the two brothers and Sean telling him it's okay to not have it all figured out. So, and then they hug. So yeah, I, I really like that. Um, that was probably my favorite moment of the episode was that scene between the two of them when they were out by the punching bag. So yeah, I'm looking forward. I don't think, you know, Sean's not in any of these episodes, but I, we might see him before the season ends. I would like that. I think it was important for Kenny to have that figure to to be kind of be the one to push him to go to miyagi Do. so we have like a nice ending we have miyagi Do all established johnny is officially become part of miyagi Do, and that kind of transitions into south korea where we have kim daun students all training and crease walks up and tells uh her that cobra kai is back so th this was an interesting cliffhanger i kind of liked how they transition from one dojo to another dojo because it's clear that these are going to be the rivals for miyagi Do. we're getting a new cobra kai we're getting crease and kim da un in charge new students i mean i do think they kind of wrote themselves into a corner at the end of season five with how do they write from here like because cobra kai was done i do think with having crease escape prison and how they ended it this was the best thing they could do was have him and Kim da -un team up in South Korea. So I, I'm happy that they went in that direction, that they didn't just have Kreis stay in the valley and just being like all over the place. Um, so I was happy with that. Um, but yeah, I would say overall, I would give this episode like a nine. I think it was very strong start to uh, season six after such a long wait. Um, I will be giving reviews for two, three, four, and five in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for those. Comment down below what you thought of this premiere episode. And yeah, uh, Cobra Kai never dies, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.